Did you know that Calvin Harris' first big project was with Kylie Minogue? Or that he once dated Kesha? Well, we'll tell you all about it. But first, let's see how this Scotsman became Calvin Harris. You know him for hits like We Found Love and How Deep Is Your Love and for his hilarious Snapchats, which we'll cover in the lightning round. But many don't know that the famous DJ had a bit of a struggle to find success. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dylan and we're here to tell you all about Calvin Harris's trek to the music throne. So get ready, because Mike Drop is counting down the 107 music facts about Calvin Harris. Let's get started. Fact number one. Calvin Harris was born on January 17, 1984, in Dumfries, which is a small town in southern Scotland. Fact number two, his birth name is actually Adam Richard Wiles. He uses a stage name because his first big track had a soulful sound and he wanted to release it under a name that was racially ambiguous. Fact number three, his dad, David, is a biochemist and his mom, Pamela, is a homemaker. He also has two older siblings, Sophie and Edward, while his siblings moved away after they left for college, his parents still live in the house Lil Calvin grew up in. Fact number four, Calvin grew up quick and shot up to a height of six feet five inches. Woo! Fact number five, as a kid, he played soccer and was a local star in his school's annual sports day, where he shined in three-legged races and egg and spoon relays. Those are not easy. Fact number six, Calvin's interest in music was sparked at a very young age, initially through playing the guitar and bass. He also took guitar lessons in school, but his gifted musical mind proved to be too much for lessons. He could basically play music just through sight reading. Fact number seven, his music teacher said that playing wasn't young Calvin's forte and that he really shined when it came to composition. However, because he had to play some kind of instrument for his final, he chose to play a little bass. Fact number eight. When he was a teenager, Calvin turned his bedroom into a recording studio, starting off with a set of turntables and a dinky little Amiga computer. Fact number nine. In order to pay for new equipment for his studio, he worked several odd jobs, including as a stock boy at a local supermarket, Marks and Spencer, and at a fish processing plant that provided Scottish salmon to the Queen of England herself. That is a royal piece of fish. Fact number 10. His music teacher graciously let Calvin bring home microphones, mixers, and even a mini disc recorder that he used to help lay down his first demo tracks. Fact number 11. When he wasn't at school or at work, Calvin was either in his home studio laying down demos or browsing for vintage vinyl records and cassette tapes at the local record store, Barnstorm. Fact number 12. As soon as he had the tracks laid down, Calvin was sending his recordings out to record labels, but he didn't find much success at first. In 2002, two of his songs were released as a club single under the artist name Stouffer. Yes, just like the Frozen Food Company. And like the Frozen Food, Calvin's tracks were received ice coldly. Ooh, no bueno. Fact number 13. Calvin then moved to London, looking for more work as a DJ and music producer, but he was unable to land anything big, only scoring a single track on a 2004 compilation of songs by the Unabombers. Hey, still something. Fact number 14. Calvin's struggle continued. When he sent his tracks to producers and record labels, he usually got nothing back. The one time he did receive a letter, it basically said, not bad for a school kid. With no money to pay the rent, he moved back to his parents' home in Dumfries when he was 23. Fact number 15. Calvin's next move was to try and start a record label of his very own. He had over 1,000 vinyl records pressed, which wound up gathering dust in his bedroom because the label, unfortunately, did not take off. Next, fact number 16. Calvin then turned to MySpace to publish his music. Yes, MySpace. It did exist. This turned out to be the right move because in 2006, he was signed to the EMI label after one of their reps discovered Calvin's page and liked what they heard. Victory! Fact number 17. Calvin's first project in professional music had him working alongside the legendary Kylie Minogue. The two spent the beginning of 2007 working on songs for her comeback album. Fact number 18. His first single as Calvin Harris, acceptable in the 80s, was released soon after he began working with Kylie. The song charted in the top 10 in the UK once it hit the airwaves and remained on the charts for 27 weeks. Fact number 19. 
The eccentric music video featured many 80s hallmarks, like big hair and bright neon and pastel colors. You can also see a team of scientists dissecting an otter puppet and using a mysterious goo found inside to cook, heal wounds, and create a lovely perm. This is a reference to the fact that in the 80s, cosmetic testing on animals was still legal in the UK. Fact number 20. Calvin's next single, The Girls, performed even better, peaking at number three in the UK and staying on the charts for 15 weeks. Fact number 21. The music video for The Girls featured a scruffy-faced Calvin Harris singing the song alongside a bunch of girls in almost identical outfits and colorful wigs. Fact number 22, Calvin's first album, I Created Disco, charted in the top 10 in the UK and remained there for 15 weeks. It was later certified gold in the UK. Fact number 23, the album's success helped Calvin become instantly a hometown hero. One of his favorite old hangout spots back in Dumfries, a pub called The Coach and Horses Inn, hung a signed poster of Calvin's album cover in honor of their former regular's success. Fact number 24. Soon after the album was released, Calvin embarked on his first tour, a three-week arena gig with the British electronic group Faithless. Fact number 25. Calvin couldn't bring his old school Amiga setup on the road with him, so he toured alongside a live band instead. Live music lives! Fact number 26. By 2008, Calvin has made his way to the United States, making the trek to perform at Coachella. By that time, his MySpace page had grown to have over a million friends and over two and a half million views. Fact number 27. Despite having such a huge following before the Coachella trip, Calvin had only performed in the US twice, once in New York City and once in Los Angeles. Fact number 28. Calvin's name was starting to grow across dance floors everywhere. Part of it was due to the remixes he had started to churn out. The following year, he even won a Music Producers Guild Award for Best Remixer in 2009. Fact number 29. In 2008, Calvin collaborated with British rapper Dizzy Rascal on a new single, Dance With Me. The two decided to work together after meeting at a BBC radio event and exchanging phone numbers. Fact number 30. After their initial meeting, Calvin and Dizzy Rascal never actually met up in person to work on the song. Instead, they sent versions of the track back and forth and collaborated via phone calls. Mm-hmm. It's the digital age, baby. Fact number 31. Their hard digital work apart paid off. Dance With Me really did get everyone in the UK wanting to dance with the duo. And the song rocketed to number one on the charts, becoming the first chart-topping hit for both artists. Fact number 32. Dance With Me stayed at the top of the charts for four consecutive weeks and sold enough copies to get certified platinum. It also won the NME Award for Best Dance Floor Filler and earned Calvin a nomination at the prestigious Ivor Novello Awards for Best Contemporary Song. Fact number 33. Dance With Me was the first purposely misspelled song to top the UK charts since Stick With You by Pussycat in 2005. Fact number 34. The music video for Dance With Me actually features a Calvin Harris cameo. He played the bartender in it. Pour it up, my friend. You earned it. Fact number 35. Though there was much to celebrate, 2008 is also the year Calvin stopped drinking, a decision he made so that he could perform better for his fans. Mm-hmm. True dedication. Fact number 36. If that's not enough dedication, that year Calvin lied to reporters about baggage handlers at London's Heathrow Airport losing a bag that had the only copy of his new album in it. He later admitted that while the bag did go missing, it didn't have the album zipped up inside. He was just trying to buy time on recording. So he cooked up that now famous story with his sound engineer. Fact number 37. The first single off that new album was released in the spring of 2009. It was called I'm Not Alone and reached number one on the UK singles chart, where it peaked for two consecutive weeks and stayed on the charts for over half a year. It was his first solo number one single. Fact number 38. Calvin also said that the underlying message for I'm Not Alone is about feeling too old to go clubbing. You are never too old, Calvin. Eh, well, maybe. Fact number 39, I'm Not Alone was later the subject of controversy when Calvin pointed out the extreme similarity between his song and Chris Brown's Yeah Times 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, the two quickly made up when Chris realized the similar sound, called Calvin up, and offered him songwriting credit. See, no lawsuits needed. 
Easy Chris Breezy. Fact number 40. Calvin's second studio album, Ready for the Weekend, came out at the end of summer 2009. It reached number one in the UK and was also Calvin's first break into the US Billboard charts, where it debuted on the electronic dance album chart, peaking at number 12. Fact number 41. Though he continued to fill dance floors, Calvin also filled British tabloids with more controversy when he jumped on stage with a pineapple on his head during a taping of The X Factor. At first, the performers thought it was a stunt that was part of the show, but security quickly escorted Calvin out of the studio. He later apologized on Twitter. Fact number 42. Calvin spent much of 2010 touring in support of his album Ready for the Weekend, but at the end of the tour, he announced that he would no longer be singing on any of his tracks and that he would stop doing live shows with a full band. His goal was to focus on crafting better tracks. Fact number 43. Calvin launched a new record label in 2010 called Fly Eye Records. The name comes from the specialized glasses he wore on album covers and in music videos. He released a satirical YouTube video showing fans how to make the glasses but not really. Fact number 44, at the end of 2010, Calvin accepted an offer to go on tour with Rihanna and the two traveled to Australia and Europe together. Fact number 45, eight months later, the two collaborated again on what became Calvin's breakout hit in the US, We Found Love. Fact number 46, We Found Love was Calvin's first number one single in the US. The song stayed on top of the Billboard Hot 100 chart for 10 weeks and went quadruple platinum. Fact number 47, Calvin became the first Scottish artist to earn a number one song in America since Rod Stewart in 1993. Fact number 48, We Found Love became 2011's longest lasting song on top of the Hot 100. Billboard magazine named it the 24th best song to reach number one on the Hot 100, as well as the third best dance pop collaboration of all time. Looks like they found love and success in America. Fact number 49, Calvin released two more singles that year, Bounce featuring Khalees and Feel So Close. They both got more airplay and recognition after the success of We Found Love. Fact number 50, in between making hits, Calvin found time to bring the dancing to the US party capital, Las Vegas, where he established an occasional residency. He also traveled to far off party cities like Dubai to play shows. That's right, gotta spread the dance floor love. Fact number 51, Calvin's star power continued to grow and in 2012, he won two MTV Video Music Awards, Best EDM Video for Feel So Close and Video of the Year for We Found Love. Oh yeah, we're somewhere in the middle of the video. Uh, so that means it's time for the lightning round. Adding to Calvin's list of hit creations is his Snapchat. He's known for his funny posts and previews of upcoming tracks and was listed in Huffington Post's 10 best celebrities to follow on Snapchat. Let's check out some of his posts. You be the judge. Fact number 52. Calvin has some Snapchats showing him on an exercise bike as he narrates and makes jokes. Hmm, multitasking at its best. Gotta stay in shape. Fact number 53. In other posts, we find that Calvin also plays a video game in which he is riding a bike and he constantly yells at his character while providing game explanation for his viewers, giving PewDiePie a run for his money. Fact number 54. These amazingly random Snapchats show Calvin, we think, or maybe one of his friends wearing a Lucha Libre mask, making poses and saying random phrases, half of which we couldn't understand but we still couldn't stop watching. Fact number 55, Calvin has many posts showing him driving and lip syncing while driving and even one of this ventriloquist dummy lip syncing. How deep is your love? Is that cool or weird or scary? Fact number 56, Calvin likes to shoot lots of Snapchats with his friends, including this one of his friend taking a bite of a chili pepper and then regretting it. Fact number 57, there's also many posts of them partying and singing along to his music. Fact 58, then there's this hilarious video of Calvin's friend Jake Jacobson saying he's Bob Seger and making some funny and questionable facial movements and then talking some nonsense. It's pretty amazing to watch and Bob Seger's like, I like that old time rock and roll. Fact number 59, Calvin once posted a video of him watching Taylor Swift's cats and trying to keep his food away from one. He also posted Snapchat showing them celebrating their one year anniversary with chocolate cake. Fact number 60, some of Calvin's Snapchats show him using the apps feature to make funny face alterations. Other posts show him wearing more masks. This DJ loves to goof around. 
and we love to watch. Fact number 61. But Calvin also posts serious things, like Snapchats showing the studio and the different sound equipment while mentioning the projects he's working on. He gotta promote, that's the name of the game. And we are always looking forward to more Calvin Harris music. Oh yeah, that is the end of the lightning round. Which was your favorite Calvin snap? You can follow him at Calvin Harris for more awesome posts. And now, back to more facts. Uh -huh. Fact number 62. His third studio album, 18 Months, was released in 2012, hitting number one in the UK and number 19 in the US. Fact number 63. In the UK, nine singles from the album charted in the top 10, breaking a record set by Michael Jackson and giving Calvin Harris the new musical throne. Fact number 64. Calvin received three Grammy nominations in 2013 and 2014 for his work on 18 Months, Best Electronic Dance Album, and two nods for Best Dance Recording. He also received the Ivor Novello Award for Songwriter of the Year. Fact number 65. Calvin also signed an exclusive residency deal that year with the MGM Grand Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. He would perform at its brand new nightclub, Hakkasan, and the hotel's poolside day club, Wet Republic. Fact number 66. The Las Vegas bred rockers, The Killers, asked Calvin to remix their song, When You Were Young, for their greatest hits album. He exclusively previewed the song to Rolling Stone in fall 2013, saying it was an honor to remix a song by one of his favorite modern bands. Fact number 67, the song Under Control, which featured the DJ Alesso and electronica duo Hertz, was released at the tail end of 2013 and it debuted at number one in the UK. Fact number 68, in 2014, Calvin brought us another single called Summer and it peaked at number one in the UK. It also reached number seven on the Billboard Hot 100, making it his highest charting solo effort in the US to date. Fact number 69, Summer became the most streamed track of 2014, being played over 200 million times and earning the Scotsman close to $1.5 million. Fact number 70, Calvin headlined tons of music festivals, including Coachella, Lollapalooza, Austin City Limits, and Electric Daisy Carnival. Fact number 71, Calvin's Coachella set drew the second largest crowd in festival history. The only act to ever beat him was the 2013 duo of Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg, featuring an entirely different kind of electronic musician, the famous Tupac Hologram. Fact number 72, only one year into his two-year contract with Hakkasan, Calvin was offered another $10 million to stay for a third year. The demand to see him perform in Vegas was so high that even if he were to double his show dates, there would have been still a waiting list to see him perform. Fact number 73. With all the money coming his way, it was no surprise that after the majority of his tour, Calvin bought and relocated to a Beverly Hills compound valued at over $15 million. Fact number 74. In the fall of 2014, Calvin dropped his third single called Blame off his upcoming album. The track featured British crooner John Newman. It debuted at number one in the UK singles charts, giving him his fifth solo single. Fact number 75. Blame reached the number one spot globally on Spotify within just three days of its debut, eventually helping him become the first artist to reach one billion streams. Billion with a B. Fact number 76. His fourth studio album, Motion, was released at the end of 2014. It debuted at number five on the Billboard 200 and at number two in the UK. Fact number 77. Motion was Calvin's first top 10 album in the US and had more than double the first week's sales than his previous album did. Fact number 78. Calvin kicked off 2015 by signing a new three-year extension of his Hakkasan contract that not only continued his exclusive residency with the nightclub, but also signed him as their music consultant for their restaurants and hotels. Mm-mm, not letting go of this musical genius. Fact number 79, in 2015, he was also named Man of the Year by Glamour UK Magazine and was named the new face of Emporio Armani, appearing in a series of ads sporting a little more than his skivvies. Fact number 80, his next single, How Deep Is Your Love, featuring Disciples, was released in summer 2015. In the UK, it debuted at number seven, becoming Calvin's 19th top 10 single in jolly old England. Fact number 81, in Australia, how Deep Is Your Love reached the top of the charts after a six week climb, giving Calvin his first number one down on that. Fact number 82, the music video for the song starred supermodel Gigi Hadid, a casting choice that was made by Calvin himself. I mean, who else could fit the standards of man of the year, Gigi? 
Fact number 83. Calvin's next single, This Is What You Came For, was released in April 2016. It featured one of Calvin's favorite collaborators, Rihanna. It was the duo's first work together in five years. Fact number 84. While no one is quite sure when this pop and DJ will release new music, Calvin remains highly in demand, and his pocketbook is proof of that. He's been included on Forbes' highest paid DJ list for three years in a row. Fact number 85. Calvin is one of 16 artist shareholders in Jay-Z's music streaming service, Tidal. DJ and businessman. Fact number 86. He is also an active philanthropist and has been since the outset of his career. In 2007, Calvin headlined the Wasted Youth concert in support of the campaign Against Living Miserably, a suicide awareness charity in Scotland. Fact number 87. He has also performed at the War Child concert, raising money to be sent to children affected by violence in war zones. Fact number 88. In 2012, Calvin performed at the House of Blues in Los Angeles alongside a slew of other dance music artists to raise money for Children's Hospital Los Angeles and the Children's Orthopedic Center. Fact number 89. In the same year, he worked with the global anti-AIDS organization Red and provided a track to the charity album Dance. He also participated in a live streamed concert on World AIDS Day in Australia to raise money for the charity. Fact number 90. Calvin has dated a who's who of sexy musicians. His first romance was with pop star Kesha, who he had worked alongside on a UK tour back in 2009. Relationship rumors swirled in 2011 when they were spotted kissing at a music festival. Fact number 91. Next, he got involved with British songstress Rita Ora. The pair dated for about a year before splitting up in 2014, with distance being the main problem between the two. Fact number 92. His latest breakup was with Taylor Swift after dating for about a year since the spring of 2015. Hmm, I guess we can expect some new T-Swift music real soon and it's gonna be good. Fact number 93. Calvin and Taylor were set up by their mutual friend, Ellie Goulding, who thought they'd fit well as a couple, partially because they both were pretty tall. Unfortunately, the relationship itself didn't have much height. Fact number 94. While the two were dating, they topped Forbes' list of highest paid celebrity couples, pulling in $146 million between them in 2015. Fact number 95. Calvin was involved in a car crash in 2016 when the SUV taking him to the airport was T-boned by a Volkswagen Beetle. Luckily, no one was fatally injured, but Calvin had to cancel a few shows to rest after being released from the hospital. Fact number 96. Calvin has two tattoos, a flower of life symbol on his left arm and the words enter with boldness in cursive on his right arm, which is a reference to Robert Greene's famous book, The 48 Laws of Power. Fact number 97. As a kid, Calvin was made fun of a lot by his peers for having an English accent instead of a Scottish one. Well, ladies, we know you agree. Both are pretty cool. Fact number 98. His first public performance was as a young lad in elementary school when he had to recite memorized lines from a poem by Robert Burns, a man of big influence in his hometown. Burns is most well known for writing the New Year's Eve anthem, Old Lang Syne. Fact number 99. Calvin is allergic to cats. Ironically enough, his ex Taylor Swift is a cat lover and had a couple felines that she had Calvin watch for her. Maybe that's why they broke up. Hachoo! Fact number 100. Although he's a massive global superstar, Calvin still finds time to return home and hang with old friends from his Dumfries days. He is even set to be the best man at one of his childhood friend's weddings. That is what bros are for. Fact number 101. His former music teacher says Calvin Harris is by far the most famous student he's ever had. Even though he isn't personally a fan of the house music Calvin creates, well, it's a good thing he didn't listen to his teacher. Fact number 102. Calvin is a big soccer fan and claims Liverpool as his favorite team. He actually started collecting team memorabilia long before he collected equipment to fill his home studio with. Fact number 103. In 2008, Calvin supported Home Time Scotland, a campaign aimed at ending homelessness and bad housing in Scotland. Fact number 104. Calvin partnered with Coca-Cola UK in 2009 for their Open Happiness ad campaign. He wrote the song, Yeah, 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 La 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 for the Coke brand, which was featured on TV and digital commercials and on many other promotional pieces. The track was available as a free download on the Coke Zone website. Fact number 105. Calvin's hand in advertisement continued in 2009 when his song Colors was used in Kia Motors TV commercial for the Kia Soul EV. 
The DJ has also had music in commercials for Pepsi Max and DFS sofas. Fact number 106, Calvin has done many collaborations, so it's surprising to learn that he turned down the opportunity to work with Lady Gaga in 2008 because he didn't know who she was. Hello, she's Gaga. It's never too late. That seems like a match made in heaven. Fact number 107. In 2013, Calvin Harris was the highest paid DJ of the year, making over $46 million. And he's just getting started. Oh yeah, we did it, high five. Once again, I'm Dylan and you just finished watching Mike Drops 107 Music Facts about Calvin Harris. Did you guys enjoy these facts? Make sure to subscribe because we're bringing you more facts each and every week about your favorite musicians. Which musician do you want us to look up facts about? We'll do it. Just let us know in the comments below. And we'll see you next week. For Mike Drop, I'm Dylan. And we're out. Peace.